episode number two of the Belleville Sens podcast. Uh, first episode on the road away from CAA Arena. We're in Laval, uh, site of the 2023 AHL All-Star Classic. And that's coming up in uh, about well, a little under a month, a few weeks away. And we'll have lots of content on that uh, around All-Star time including Igor Sokolov, who we spoke to last week. But this week on the show, we'll be joined by Sen Strength and Conditioning Coach Mitch Freeburn. A little bit later on, uh, Alex Smith, who is uh, with us all the time on the broadcast, at least we mention his name, you never hear him talk. Uh, he's sticking around after guesting with us last week because he's uh, on the road with the club. And Joel Vanderland, as always, is with us too, Skyping in from the uh, growing metropolis of Wooler, Ontario, uh, just north of the... 401. Uh, glad to have you with us. Uh, this week's show is going to be pretty much the same as last week. We're going to recap a, a tough week at home. We're going to preview another tough week on the road, and then we'll talk to Mitchie, and uh, you can learn a little bit more about what goes on in the life of a strength and conditioning coach in the American Hockey League. You may hear a little bit of background noise as well. That's because, again, we're up in the broadcast booth here at the beautiful Plas Bell. Um, not your first visit to Plas Bell, Alex, but uh, it's always nice to come back here. It's it's such a spot. Yeah, no, this is, uh, it's good memories coming back here. This was the first road trip I ever did was uh, this building, so being able to see another arena in the AHL was neat, and it's uh, always a rowdy crowd here, so good times. Yeah, it always is, and uh, same for you, Joel. You've made uh, this trip a couple times uh, as well. Um, I assume you feel the same way. Most people do about this uh, this building. Yeah, it's a beautiful facility, and you can see why they were uh, selected to, to host the AHL All-Star game as well. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Again, February 5th and 6th, the AHL All-Star Classic. Igor Sokolov will represent the Belleville Senators. Uh, let's get into the past week as we look at last week's results. And really, Joel, a tough six-game homestand for Belleville, just the one win four losses and uh, a shootout loss, which came on Wednesday against Toronto. Um I think the, you know, without getting too deep into things, uh, the one thing that we're taking away from this or that Troy Mann has been taking away from this is the competitiveness of, uh, of his team's play. Yeah, and for stretches of all three games that, that Belleville played at home last week, they were in the game. At times they were even commanding in the game. Uh, you look at the last game against Hershey there for 45 minutes, um, they were in the driver's seat uh, against Toronto too. Uh, both those games, they were they were highly competitive against one of the best teams in the American Hockey League. So, when you look back over over those three games, you have to take the positives that they were able to compete with two of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. And it highlights again one of the things that Troy talks about all the time is the momentum swings um, that you face in the American Hockey League. Um, you mentioned it that game against Hershey. 45 minutes, uh, the Senators were the better team, and then boom, um, the Bears able to turn it on and, and end up skating to that 4-2 to two victory. And I think it's something that this young group is getting better at, but still uh, has a, a fair ways to go in, in really being able to be confident, I think, in, in controlling that momentum game to game. Yeah, I think it's something you have to learn as well, right? It's uh, momentum swings is a big part of the game, and and maybe it's something to to the casual fan that maybe you don't really see or, or understand right away. But when when you get into it, it, it definitely controls games. The momentum you can collect off killing a penalty or scoring on a power play; those things play huge dividends over the course of sixty minutes. And I think Bevel's getting closer to it. Um, and I think uh, hopefully on this road trip they can, they're going to have to control these momentum swings like you mentioned in a tough place like Plas Bell. Springfield's not an easy place to go and visit as well. So um, if they're going to want to have some success on this road trip, they're going to have to really con control the momentum swings and uh, continue to, to put together full 60 minutes to, to get wins. Uh, more on the uh, upcoming road trip, which starts tonight uh, later on in, in the show. Um, as we, again, try to do on this show and, and put a positive spin on things, uh, there are some highlights from last week and, and some of the uh, better performers. Uh, a guy like Cole Castles is now in a seven-game uh, point streak. That's a career high from him, and you have to look to those guys to kind of lead by example with such a, a young group. But was there anyone who stood out to you, Alex, this week? Yeah, you know, Castles was uh, 
he seemed to just continue to produce, and uh, he was definitely my who to watch um, during that home stand. And um, I love seeing players go on streaks like that. It just really shows that um, players do get hot, and they can ride those ride those streaks and help uh, produce for the team. So yeah, Cole Castles was was big for me, and and obviously uh, that fourth line. Um, Boucher and, and Betts have really been standing out. They seem to really uh, be developing in, in a developing league, right? So it's it's nice seeing those guys get their first few points in the league and uh, continue to work well together. It's It's been fun to watch those two as well. How about you, Joel? Who else stuck out, uh, stuck out for you last week? I think Kevin Mandelaze uh, deserves a lot of credit uh, playing all three games due to some, uh, some injuries uh, with his fellow netminders there. And I think... Um, Maybe not the results he wanted in the win-loss column, but uh, really kept his team in those games. And Toronto is never an easy task. They can score at will. Uh, and Hershey, we see, too, is uh, is a juggernaut, and you can see why they're leading the Atlantic Division. So I think Kevin Mandelaze taking, taking the net for all three games and, and really keeping his team in there, earning a, a big shootout point against the, the Marlies to kick off the week, and then um, just continuously developing, like Alex said, you see Betts and Boucher uh, develop, and Kevin Mandelaze since coming back from the on Americans has been really steady. All in all, a tough week, a 6-5 shootout loss to Toronto, a 4-3 regulation time loss to Toronto, and then the 4-2 regulation loss to the Hershey Bears. Uh, puts Belleville now in last place in the division, uh, seventh out of seven teams, and it seems like a tough spot, but we do have to remember that uh, we are just barely halfway through the season. There is a lot of divisional play to come, and uh, this team does tend to get hot for stretches in the second half, and uh, that's obviously the focus when uh, the club gets healthy and we do have some uh, good news on the injury front coming up uh, in our next segment as well. But uh, as it sits right now, heading into the week, Senators, as mentioned, in seventh. Uh, if you're looking for you know the playoff picture, four points back of the Laval Rocket for fifth place, which means that uh, the game here on this Wednesday night and uh, the three games that Laval is going to play in Belleville uh, next month are going to be crucial. Uh, Senators uh, likely will be... If we're being realistic, battling for that fourth or fifth spot, uh, Rochester and Laval in fourth or fifth, uh, Syracuse, Utica, and Toronto starting to pull away a little bit up top. Well, Toronto's long gone, but those other two teams starting to pull away, uh, though they could be caught again uh, if Belleville goes on, on a run, so we'll have to see if they're able to do that. Uh, that's where the standings sit. Not much change in the statistical leaders this week, uh, although Rourke Chartier is back from Ottawa, so the Belleville Sands goals leader at 14 is back in the lineup. Igor Sokolov still leading in assists and points. Reinhardt and Ridley Gregg still uh, with two shorthanded goals for Jacob Bernard Docker still leads the team in plus minus at a very impressive plus six. And Joel, I don't know if you want to weigh in on that really quick. I think you did last week too, but uh, just having that steadiness on the blue line will be a big help for the Senators uh, coming into this week and, and then beyond. Yeah, and for for twenty two year old to be as calm and, and steady as he is, it's it's ultra impressive. And I think uh, we talked to him back on the last road trip, and and you kind of uh, asked him where does this calm, uh, steady presence come from? And he's just so cool, calm, and collected. He's always played that that kind of style of uh, of always having his head up, making the smart play, making the smart read, and. Um, when you add him back and him and Dylan Hetherington are so comfortable together and they can become a true true shutdown pair for this for this club. Uh, that will be the plan this week. We will uh, see how Belleville does. <laughs> Again, Laval is uh, heating up. Springfield is uh, traditionally pretty good. Uh, we'll have more on uh, what's happening with uh, the road trip and what's coming up this week in just a moment. And uh, send strength and conditioning coach Mitch Freeburn set to join us uh, in a little while as well. So uh, we'll take a quick breather. We will uh, recap our highlight of the week. We'll set up the week ahead, and then we'll chat to Mitch Freeburn on episode two of the Belleville Sends podcast on the Belleville Sends Entertainment Network. Out the other way is Luco Savages fighting to center ice. Slipped off for Betts right in front. They score! A one-hander from Matt 
Boucher, and the Sens are back within one. And Kyle Betts will get an assist on that as well. Some nice transition play from the Belleville Sens. And that all starts with a great save by Kevin Mann. Well, we talked about those guys uh, in our first segment, uh, Matt Boucher and Kyle Betts. Of course, Jared Lucas Savages has been a big uh, piece of that fourth line, the PTO line, if you will, for the Belleville Senators. As uh, we continue on in episode two of the Belleville Sens podcast, David Foote and Alex Smith here in Laval. Joel Vanderland is on the line with us and will be joined in the booth here by Sens strength and conditioning coach Mitch Freeburn um, in a few minutes. Uh, I think we already talked about uh, uh, those couple of guys, those three guys, if you will, maybe enough, Joel, but perhaps one more thought just on uh, Boucher specifically, because he's the one who had uh, the really, really big, um, you know, outpouring, uh, at least in one game last week with a couple of goals. Um, this is a guy who is undersized, but uh, has the, some pedigree and, and is a former ECHL Rookie of the Year, and, and we see flashes of that sometimes. Why he was the ECHL Rookie of the Year? You can see why he put up uh, massive points in the QMJHL. He has a, he has a skill set. Uh, he works extremely hard. He gets some some time on the penalty kill uh, throughout the year as well. And this tonight's going to be a big game for him back in back in Quebec and in his home province. And um, no, he's a player that like like you mentioned, just just a player that wants to stay in Belleville, wants to continue to to be at the American Hockey League level and. He's making sure that that Troy Mann's going to have a tough decision when players start to get healthy because he's putting the puck in the net now. Uh, he's playing to his identity. He's getting in on the forecheck. Um, and he's a guy that we've seen since game one when he made his debut in this building for the Belleville Senators to now uh, he's grown leaps and bounds. Uh, we didn't mention that Victor Lodine scored uh, in front of his friends and family uh, last week. He had uh, family over from Sweden, and uh, he'll be a big uh, piece of the puzzle offensively, uh, as will Rourke Chartier, who draws back in, as will perhaps Lassie Thompson, maybe Roby Arvente, who might be uh, joining the active lineup near the end of this road trip. Uh, both of them are on the trip and, and could play in Springfield on Friday. Um, let's start with this game in uh, in Laval tonight, Joel. Um it's it's going to be tough. Uh, this is a Rocket team that is streaking. They have at least one of the top 20 scorers in the league in Anthony Richard, and uh, they have goaltenders who always seem to play pretty well against the Belleville Sens, uh, including Caden Primo, who will go tonight. Yeah, exactly, and Caden Primo is never, never an easy guy to beat. Um, for Belleville, they've had success in this building, and they're going to have to continue that. They're going to have to go back to, to the drawing board, as Troy Mann mentioned uh to put this this home stand behind them and everything's in front of them. They're four points behind uh, the Rocket, and the easiest way to catch them is, is to beat them head to head and um, make sure that these aren't uh, these are four point games really. If if you can you can collect two and not give them anything, uh, you're going to make up ground pretty quick. And it's never an easy task to beat Caden Primo or, or shut down the Rocket in this building. Um, but Belleville's had success here this year, and they have to continue. Continue that uh, that stretch of play where they uh, where they continue to to play to their identity, continue to forecheck and and slow down some of those uh, high flying rockets. And from the non statistical side of things, Alex, you've been here for a few games and some tight ones as well. And um, I think you can probably speak to as as anyone who's been here for a tight game the difference that the crowd makes you mentioned it earlier on like this place gets bumping and it it can be tough even for us to you know not get sidetracked and and caught up in all the atmosphere here yeah absolutely but you know what looking at from uh an away team coming in i i like speaking for myself i i love having a rowdy crowd and that just kind of makes you want to win even more right yeah. uh, being in a building and Seeing someone like Rourke Chartier uh, doing that, he, as we know, he's done that a few times in this uh, arena, and seeing him return here in this arena, I can see that uh, panning out tonight, something, uh, a game winner from him would be awesome. Yeah, nothing like uh, coming into a, a loud building as a visitor, and uh, at the end of the night, it's dead quiet, mm -hmm. and you get to walk out, and all you can hear is the music bumping from your own dressing room. Uh, that will be the, the hope here tonight uh, as uh, the Sens will pack up and head to Springfield. What about Springfield, Joel? The uh, reigning defending AHL Eastern Conference champions uh, are not the same club that went to the Calder Cup final last year, but uh, not to be taken lightly as we saw earlier on in the season. Yeah, and uh, that was a tough, the tough go that 
to last weekend set when the Springfield Thunderbirds came to CIA Arena, beating the beating the Pellas Senators twice. But like you mentioned, not as strong as maybe the the previous club they had last season, but still a very dangerous uh, team, very structured as we've seen. And uh, Will Bitten's a player that maybe to, to watch. He can score shorthanded. He can score five on five and. Um, the Springfield Thunderbirds are in that tough uh, Atlantic Division playoff battle as well, and they need points. And um, like you mentioned with Laval, uh, Springfield's also a really tough uh, building to play in. Well, you talk about uh, how tight the North Division is and how competitive it is. The Atlantic Division is uh, just as tight this year, if not tighter, and uh, only like 16 points as of the recording of today uh, separating 8th place or 7th place where Springfield sits uh, and 1st place the Hershey Bears. And I guess that is maybe a bright spot for Belleville is that they're going to go on uh, to take on another team that is kind of meddling near the bottom of the standings, which is always nice on paper. But this is also a team that's trying to climb back into the playoff race and and that's going to make things inherently more difficult, I would think, for Belleville this weekend. It will, and I think two from Springfield, they got two really solid goaltenders. Joel Hofer always puts up good uh, good numbers, and Zarechenko as well. And it's never easy to beat Springfield, especially in that building. As we watched uh, watched the the, uh, the Calder Cup playoffs unfold last year, and we saw the run that they were able to put together, and um, they can score with the best of them. Matthew Highmore's putting up a good season, thirty six points in forty games. Uh, we mentioned Will Bitten's. Uh, about 12 goals on the year. Martin Furk's starting to, to get going. We saw him uh, at CAA Arena getting in the mix of it. And uh, he's a player like Victor Lodine or Roby Arventi who can who can change the outcome with, with one shot. So um, they're never they're never an easy out. Um, but the Belleville Centers have to have to feel good going into Springfield knowing that they're gonna possibly get Lassie Thompson back, possibly get Roby Arventi back. Um, and if they can win tonight in in Laval, they'll have all the confidence in the world. And uh, yeah, that uh, the Thunderdome, as they call it in in Springfield, is a difficult place for the Senators as well. Uh, they haven't had a lot of success there historically, but a trend that they would like to change uh, as they head there this weekend, uh, looking for some out of division points. And uh, all the points at this point are extremely uh, important. And uh, our plans have changed a little bit. I was really excited to go to Springfield. Uh, and Alex and I were going to hit the Basketball Hall of Fame. We had a day planned out. Uh, now, because of the weather, that's not going to happen. But uh, uh, still a chance to check out a new building and, and see what uh, other teams are doing in, in other places. Yeah, better safe than sorry. I think uh, <laughs> driving tomorrow will uh, be the better bet just with this storm coming in. But, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate, but we'll make the most of it. And, uh, yeah, it should be good. Of course, uh, depending on when you're listening to this episode, you can hear both of those games on uh, Friday and Saturday at 7.05 on the Belleville Sands Entertainment Network. If you're listening on Wednesday, uh, tonight it's uh, a 6.45 start uh, for the pregame coverage from Plas Bell in Laval as the Sens uh, try to snap this skid that they're on and to pick up some points and maybe make a climb up the North Division standings with the five games or so headed towards uh, the All-Star break. Uh, we'll take another short break. When we come back, the strength and conditioning coach of the Belleville Sins, Mitch Freeburn, will join us, talk a little, a little bit about his day-to-day, uh, his journey here, and uh, more. So stay with us on Episode 2 of the Belleville Sins Podcast. Into the final segment on this second episode of the Belleville Sens Podcast. David Foote and Alex Smith are still here in Laval. Joel Vanderland still joining us via Skype and uh, in the booth with us for our Get to Know Your... Uh, what are we calling this, Alex? It was Get to Know Your FO when it's people at home. Uh, yeah, I'd say Get to Know Your Staff. Just Belleville Get Sen to Know staff Your Belleville Sen Staff. Well, uh, Mitch Freeburn, and and this is a, a bad on me. Uh, last week when I was naming off all of the people uh, on our road staff who work so hard and bust their tails uh, every single day to make life easier and, and better for our players, I somehow managed to leave Mitch out of the equation. And first of all, as we welcome you to the show, I apologize for that, sir. I did did not mean to do that. Hey, thanks for having me. Humans are imperfect. That's (laughs) what makes us brilliant. Especially the ones who do this show. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) um, Yeah, but uh, so it was supposed to be Garrett Harvey, those who were excited to hear from Garrett. uh, We 
mentioned that last week. It was going to be Garrett, but uh, here we are on the road trying to squeeze this show in uh, as best we can. And uh, Mitchie's here, and we're, we're happy to have him. So let's talk a little bit about um, yourself and, and maybe this season so far, Mitchie. Yeah, like how's, uh, how's it been for you on the, uh, the strength and conditioning side, especially given the, uh, the injuries and, and all the extra guys that have been coming through? Yeah, it's been great. Honestly, you know, uh, the injuries have happened. Um, you just learn to deal with them. Uh, that's kind of the beauty of the game of sport. You just work with the hand you're dealt. And in terms of what I've been doing, it's just kind of a status quo with the healthy team. And then as we've had injuries, it's just more and more different programs to write. And uh, sometimes you have to just learn to balance that chaos with multiple different schedules at the same time. And I think that's the best way to summarize it is trying to keep everybody positive, even though injuries are tough to work through. But uh Live and learn, and we wake up another day trying to get better. Uh, if you missed the intro earlier in the show, Mitch Freeburn is, of course, the strength and conditioning coach uh, with the Belleville Sens, uh, handles uh, all the off-ice workouts for the guys. Um, how do you get into to something like that? What uh, What is the stream? Because I know a lot, again, especially the guys on this show, we're not big workout guys. Uh, maybe Alex is in his spare. Speak for yourself. Please. That's right. <laughs> But like, how do you how do you make that transition from uh, I guess being interested in, in fitness and now making a career out of it uh, in professional sports? Yeah, so I think the best way to put it is honestly, there's no right one way. Uh, it's just like everything we program. There's multiple different ways to get there. But in terms of falling in love with it, it starts with just that personal workout on yourself. Um, you know, in high school, I just fell in love with the health and fitness side. I played hockey. Uh, I could have made the NHL. I just lacked size, skill, and talent. I had everything else. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but so back to your question. No, I just fell in love with working out in high school. Uh, went to uh, college in Oshawa, took kinesiology, uh, specialized in exercise science there. Fell in love with that. Just kind of further refined my craft. Uh, was lucky enough to then uh, join the uh, Oshawa Generals. Uh, I worked there for a couple years. Obviously, we went through the short and COVID year, which we've talked about before. So hopefully move on from that. And then it was just crazy. Uh, I connected with Jer Benoit when I was in Oshawa. Uh, we stayed just kind of close but far enough. Uh, whenever I'd have a question, I could ask him, and then we'd banter a bit and go our own ways. But then we had just finished training camp in Oshawa. Uh, he called me one night and just said, hey, this, this is going on. Would you like to apply? I said, yep. And then we've just been flying ever since. It's kind of a fast-paced environment. Uh, it's something I love. I'd rather be busy than doing nothing. Yeah, and it's funny how, um, like the players and kind of like the broadcasters at times, the path here is almost the same, right? You still you go to school, um, you still go through the junior ranks, and now you end up here uh, at the professional level. Um, is it a big jump on, on your side of things from uh, junior to pro? So the biggest thing I found was just the increase in travel um, and just like the spread of geography which you go because obviously when you're still in junior these kids are in school so you're trying to get them home at night and all that kind of stuff um, but in terms of the strength and conditioning aspect in itself it's a lot more teaching in junior and here the players even the young ones have definitely refined their craft so it's much more of a hand-in-hand -hand relationship they tell you where they've been I see what I think they can improve on and then we kind of build a plan out from there around their game schedule because let's face it they make their money on the ice so I'm here to compliment them and keep their best product on the ice as possible you kind of touched on it Mitch but I guess what is the biggest difference when you're looking at these guys that are already grown men compared to uh, guys that are still growing into their bodies. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just our training age and how much experience they have. Like in Oshawa, you're getting some of these kids drafted at 15, 16. They might have only trained for two years, if at all. Um, and then you get to the pro levels and you've got guys like Sabi. Like Sabi could have 15 years of experience, so there's much more of a base to work off of. And it's a lot more self-direction rather than trying to build these new patterns these guys have never experienced before. Hey Mitch, when uh, as we kind of approach the second half of the season, do you notice kind of their physiques and strengths improving? Do you kind of have to change routines from the first half and notice a difference in that sense, or is it kind of same? Yeah, same so I think, like I just want to reinforce, they make their money on the ice. So in season, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm trying to kind of complement what they don't get scratched on the ice. And then when they come off the ice, it's a lot of maintenance. It's a lot of glute work. It's a lot of trying to maintain their output. So that way, just picking a player, for example, we get the same Cole Castles as the first game and then hopefully down the playoff stretch. And 
I think that's my job is I don't necessarily have to shine in the season. It's more doing that background work so that they can continue to shine out there. And there is a lot of work that goes to it. I mean, again, we see it because we're with you guys when you do the unload and um, things like that. But what's the day-to-day -day routine like? Let's say it's game day today, so let's say for a game day, what's your typical game day like when we're not distracting you and taking up uh, your precious time? Yeah, so uh, obviously we move in usually the day before a game. So yesterday, helped the boys unpack. We unload all our trunks, everything. Um, morning of, we get here. I order groceries uh, for the guys. Um, there's a lot of, you know, bagels, snacks, just stuff to kind of fill them uh, out between the game and the pregame meal. And then it's kind of the joke going around. I've Footy takes pictures the odd time, but when the boys morning <laughs> skate, I run the stairs, uh, try and get this frame up and down the stairs. It's not pretty, but hey, it works. And then after that, uh, the guys who aren't in the lineup, we usually do a workout and then uh, they'll shower up, head back to the rink, pregame meal. Depending where it is, we stay here. And then... Around, you know, 3.45, 4 o'clock, players start rolling back in. They all have their own routines that we kind of work on. Um, some players are very structured with us. Some are not. But um, once the players get back in here, my work has kind of been done, my prep work. So now it's I'm trying to fill buckets that they feel they need to best perform on the ice at 7 o'clock or whenever we start. Yeah. What's kind of included in your, when you say your prep work? Like what, what type of stuff are you doing um, to prepare, I guess, for the guys getting back to the rink? Yeah, so it's kind of, you know, uh, getting guys moving because obviously they don't come in, take their suit off, throw the gear on the way they go. So it's coming in, um, get any stretch they need, just get moving on the bike. Um, guys like Crookshank, like a little visual preparatory work, so we'll do interaction stuff like that. Um, guys like Lassie Thompson, they like to do a little more strength work. So, again, there's that personal aspect, and it's easier if you asked about one guy kind of thing to talk about what he does, but I think that's the beauty of what I fell in love with is the fact that every player is different, so you have to learn to think on your toes and adapt based on how they're feeling. And then I guess, uh, Mitch, just after the game, what's kind of the cool down routine that uh, that you typically run with these guys? Yeah, so obviously at home we have a little more equipment, but when you're on the road, you have only usually two or three bikes, so you make it work. So you get some guys on the bikes. Uh, some guys honestly just go for a walk. And then guys just get into a stretch. You think of your prime movers on the ice. We hit quad. Uh, we tend to try and leave groin alone, hit glute. And then again, it depends how guys are feeling. Like if, you know, Roby comes to me and says, hey, the back's not feeling overly good, then we do a little more structured work there. So there's kind of the same foundation. It starts with bringing that system down, calming the heart rate down on the bike or go for a walk. And then from a muscular sense, it really depends on what each guy needs. And then that's an individualized plan from there. Um, obviously, the goal of all of these players is to get to the NHL. Um, is safe to say that's the same goal for for someone in your position in this league? Yeah, and you know what? I think the best way to get recognition is just to keep your head down and keep slugging. Um, if you constantly put out the effort every day, you're going to have that product, and people are going to be forced to talk about you eventually. So I think my personal goal is just, you know, keep giving these guys the best product, best version of myself I can. Hopefully they turn pro in going to the NHL, and then, you know what, maybe it comes up in conversation when they do get there and my name gets thrown around, and then we build that relationship from there. A couple more minutes here with Sen's strength and conditioning coach, uh, Mitch Freeburn. Uh, off the ice, uh, you're a new resident of Belleville. I know you've got a little bit of connection mm -hmm. in and around the Quinney region. Um, how's it been for you kind of settling into to the city, and um, how much nicer is it to be in town rather than having to commute every day? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I've lived in the country my entire life, so the two things I noticed first when I moved to Belleville was, holy crap, the water pressure in town. <laughs> and then a second one is the speed of the Wi-Fi you can get. Like, I've never watched a movie half my life without having it buffer at some point. Like That's like Joel uh, Skyping in from Wooler today. He's feeling that as well. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's awesome living yeah. in town. Like, the access to resource and then being close to the rink, too. Like, even if we have an off day and... Soko or somebody says, hey, I want some content. It's five minutes to the rink, and I can manage that relationship with him. And then, well, it's also close, not too far to the my way for the off day for myself. So, um, yeah, I love living in town. It's a little bit different. Uh, struggle to fall asleep at night because I've never seen so many lights. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's stuff you work through, and you live and learn to adapt to where you are. Yeah, the bright lights of downtown Bell Vegas. They'll keep you up sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we'll let you go, Mitchie. I know you got uh, a lot to do because it is game day here, but uh, thanks for stopping by, man. We appreciate uh, you coming on. Hey, I appreciate you having me on and listening to me try and put words together.
Mitch Freeburn, the strength and conditioning coach uh, for the Belleville Sens. One of these days, we're going to have to join him on the stairs, maybe. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, who knows when that'll be, but uh, I don't know about this rink. This rink's a bit too big. It maybe looks a Utica little steep and big. Yeah, <laughs> let's. Uh, we'll have to, next time we talk to Mitchie, we're going to have to ask him, what's the best rink to start at? Yeah. Uh, he'll probably say home, you <laughs> lazy Never mind. Yeah. Uh, but we appreciate Mitchie's time and, and all the work he does. Uh, he gets us geared up with uh, – uh, he gets me some some pregame juice every game. Told me Red Bull, too much Red Bull was not good for me. So uh, he gets me something else. He won't tell me what's in it. but uh, that's, That may be concerning. But Yeah, it's, well, uh, I trust him. We <laughs> trust Mitchie. Um, as we uh, finish things off here on Episode 2 of the Bevel Sense Podcast, again, looking ahead to games in Laval tonight in Springfield Friday and, and Saturday. Joel, what do you think uh, the Sens need to do to be successful this week, and, and how important would that be uh, heading into a couple games at home against Rochester next week? I think it's really control the momentum swings and try to piece together a, a 60-minute effort here. We've seen uh, in spurts where, where Belleville's controlled game, and especially in that last game against Hershey, for, for the first 45 minutes, they were in complete control. It's just the last 15 or so uh, really bit them there. So I think it's just and especially at Place Bell, it's going to be controlling the momentum swings, um, not letting the crowd dictate uh, how how Laval is going to go here tonight. And I think if they can do that, that they'll be in good position. And Alex, uh, how excited are you to watch one more uh, Place Bell pregame ceremony at least? <laughs> oh, yeah. Always a show. Yeah, it should be good. I'm uh, looking forward to another divisional rivalry, and we'll uh, see if we can uh, get take their number. And we didn't have uh, Mitchie pick who was going to come on next week, so we'll go back to the original plan. Garrett Harvey uh, will join us from the front office next week. A lot's happening, you should mention, next week at home. On Thursday, we've got 80s Retro Night, sponsored by uh, Hits 95 uh, FM, and uh, that's got a whole lot going on. Uh, wear your best 80s gear to the game, and you could win a VIP Belleville Sense ticket experience. And... Uh yeah, all that's true, and good luck to Ridley Gregg tonight, who uh, makes, oh, his, makes NHL his NHL debut. NHL debut. Yeah. Also next week, our Indigenous Communities Night uh, t-shirts uh, by local artist Corey Parkin are on sale now. You can head to the Belleville Sands social media for more on that. Head to Belleville Sands social media anytime at Belleville Sands for all the latest news and information. Tickets at Ticketmaster.ca or BellevilleSense.com. Uh, for Joel Vanderland, Alex Smith, Mitch Freeburn, David Foote thanking you again for listening to the Belleville Sense podcast. We'll talk to you on episode three next week.